Episode 173 brought to you by Tribe Alpha. I believe achieving success in the outdoor biz is dependent upon embracing the outdoor lifestyle and learning from outdoor leaders that came before you. If you agree, then listen up for tips, advice, and hacks about growing or starting your career in the outdoor biz. My name is Rick Says. Welcome to the Outdoor Biz Podcast. Tribe Alpha is great e-commerce for the great outdoors and can help you improve the performance of your e-commerce site. With over 25 years of experience navigating the ever-changing online marketplace, Tribe Alpha has the tools to improve your site, whether your focus is B2B, B2C, wholesale, or dealers. Tribe Alpha can help. And Outdoor Biz Podcast listeners get a special discount. Just visit tribealpha.com slash offer to receive a 10% discount off their standard pricing. Their web development experience coupled with their passion for outdoor adventure make Tribe Alpha the perfect partner for your outdoor e-commerce website. Visit tribealpha.com slash offer. That's tribealpha.com slash offer and get your e-commerce site going today. I caught up with Sarah Smith from The Dirt recently and on this episode we talk about how she and her husband got the inspiration to create The Dirt their tremendous growth, and some of the interesting gamification techniques they use to engage consumers. But first, if you're thinking about starting your own podcast for your brand or passion project, I've created a free cheat sheet outlining 10 fundamental steps to create and launch your podcast. It has everything you need to know about planning, creating, and launching. Head over to ricksays.com and download this free resource today. Hey, Sarah, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, great to catch up with you. You're recently back from a trip to Iceland after we saw each other at OR. How'd that go? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It was amazing. It's, it's such a beautiful country and really, really stark landscape. Did some great hikes. It was beautiful, beautiful country. Super green, right? Yeah. A green and then like black lava rocks. Hmm. And it, it's just really dramatic looking. Mm, yeah, yeah. And probably yeah. just expansive, right? You just look out and see oh. like, for miles. Yeah, you really can. We we actually did this amazing hike up to the top of this kind of mountain and then um, hiked towards a glacier, which mm. was pretty fun to have that, you know, in your sight as a goal, which we <laughs> didn't quite make it all the way there, but it was, yeah. it was fun to watch it coming. Yeah, very cool. Awesome. So how'd you get excited about the outdoors? What was your first adventure? You know, I um, I grew up in northern Minnesota, and if I say that enough, you'll hear the accent come out. <laughs> um, but I, I, you know, I grew up fishing. Um, my dad hunted, and a lot of camping as a kid. And my, my dad was actually a teacher, so in the summers we would spend time driving around Lake Superior, going smelting. Which I don't know if you know what smelt are, but smelting small. Yeah, uh-uh. have you heard of it? No, I don't think so. It, they're little tiny fish that almost look like minnows, oh. and I just have vague memories of, I think we did this at night, and we'd, <laughs> you'd stand in a little stream, and the smelt would go up river, and you'd hold out a little net and catch the smelt, and then we'd go cook them up. Ah, um, and just fry them up? Yeah, yeah, and I remember, you know, thinking, oh, I want to go to Disney World or do something more exciting <laughs> than this, and now, looking back at it, you know, is is a pretty special way to grow up yeah that's awesome so hiking hunting fishing that's a great way to grow up yeah did you so you spent a lot of time in education have you had a traditional outdoor job did you work retail or you know I I haven't done I've done nothing in the outdoors until I started the dirt I was really mainly focused in international education Mm -hmm. so working with higher ed study abroad students international student exchanges Um, but the dirt was my first outdoor job and what was the inspiration or the catalyst for starting that? You know, we, um, my husband and I had lived abroad for a while and we moved back to the U S and we chose Portland, Oregon, which is a beautiful part of the country. Mm-hmm. Um, my sister just moved enough. there. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. maybe you'll come visit. I will definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's great. And there's a lot of great camping, yeah, but yeah, great town. you know, as newbies here, we just, we did not know where to go mm. and we, kept going online and I would be Kevin go look for a campground to go to this weekend and he'd be <laughs> like I looked for two hours I can't find anything you look wow. Wow. um so we would argue about it and <laughs> I kept thinking why is it so hard to find a campground online because you know I can't be the only one facing this issue right and I did more research I looked into a little bit more um and indeed it is you know a pretty significant problem for campers who you go camping four to six times a year. You want it to be a special weekend. Mm-hmm. 
and you find yourself next to the train tracks or the dumpster as opposed to, you know, gurgling brook and a mm. nice waterfall. Mm-hmm. Um, you you want to know those details before you go so you make good decisions. Right, and right. that was, so Kevin, my husband and I co-founded it together, um, started it back in 2012. Oh, wow. And it was just me and then it was me and him and then contractors and only have 30 full-time employees. So we've Very grown cool. a lot. Yeah. And you guys are probably still one of the fastest growing web apps for camping, if not the only one out there, right? Yeah, we're really, we're really having a great summer, especially this summer. Um, mm-hmm. we, we're, you know, we're going for about 10 million visitors to our site this year. Wow. We have about 1200 people downloading the app every single day, about a thousand people joining every single day. Wow. Um, yeah, we're number one in the Google Play Store for camping and number, like, number four or five in iOS. So, you know, we're having a really good summer of growth, yeah, which yeah. is great because, you know, our whole website and app, they are built on a community of campers. And mm. without those people, we don't have anything. So we're really excited to have more and more people joining. So tell everybody a little bit about how it works. You go on the app and you plug in, I want to go to Yosemite, for example. Yeah. And then what happens? Yeah. So we have, you know, at at a base level, we have a database of over 40,000 campgrounds in the United States. Mm -hmm. And they can be anything from national parks to private KOAs Mm. or a state park. So any kind of campground, really. Um, And now we're even starting to get more into yurts and glamping. So there's Mm. a wide variety of, of campground options. Um, and you know, you can search and figure out the basic information about those campgrounds, but what makes the dirt special, um, is our collection of user generated content, which, you know, are photos, videos, Mm. reviews, and then data points that our users give us about campgrounds. And, you know, we're, we're starting to reach about the half a million mark there. Um, so that's really amazing, rich content that we get from these users that, that is what you know, what people want to know before they go. Yeah, they want to know um, if they're next to the bathroom or the babbling brook, like you said. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And it's different for different people. Right. I remember when I first started The Dirt, um, interviewing people about what they look for and talking to this mom, and I don't have kids, um, mm. and she was saying she prefers a campsite right next to the bathroom mm-hmm. so she can watch her kids go to the bathroom and come mm. back. Makes sense. Yeah. You know, and that yeah. would be the, the, the last spot I would choose. <laughs> Same, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And so the user goes on there. They can put in all the, the details and about their experience, photos. Mm-hmm. And then the next guy goes on there and finds, researches those details and sees that's exactly what I want or keeps going. Yeah. That's, that's huge. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you can do 90% of whatever you want to on the dirt without actually signing up for an account. Oh, you wow. can search, you can look at all the reviews. Um, if you want to add a review yourself, then you sign up for an account. Um, and part of what I love about that is for me, my profile on the dirt is kind of almost like my personal journal. And it's mm. not, you know, people can see it, but I can, I can, when people say, where did you go camping last summer? And it was in Washington. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, where was that? You know, I can easily go look now and then oh, share. Oh, so it's a logbook of your camp experience too. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah which was is, was kind of a byproduct of what we built, but it's been really useful for people to yeah. kind of have a journal of what they've done. Yeah, that's very significant. Um, yeah, the the thing that was really tricky for us was um, we knew we needed to get this content from users, and it was really frustrating in the beginning launching with what was really a database of campgrounds mm-hmm. and being like, well, this isn't really what my dream was. <laughs> yeah. You know, I didn't want a database. Yeah. And having to figure out how to encourage people to come to your site, sign up for your site, and give this content. And we really focus on like the 1% of people out there who are active in giving that content. And we worked on incentivizing them. So um, how we did that is we kind of gamified the Mm -hmm. whole Mm -hmm. process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like the U.S. is divided into 21 different contest regions. And um, if you add a review and you're in Washington State, you will get five points for the video, three points for a photo, and a point for the written review. Mm -hmm. And there's a leaderboard, 
and you can watch yourself go up and down this leaderboard. So people, you know, get really competitive. Right. And at the end of the month, the top reviewer wins and we wipe the leaderboard clean and it all starts again. Wow. Um, that's very cool. And yeah, it's, it's been really. And really so what happens with the points? The, what, the points, what do the points get them? Um, the points along with the quality of the reviews, if you're the, the best at the end of the month, mm. we work with different brands in the outdoor industry. Oh, cool. Um, so for example, Primus Stoves, Gregory Backpack, we, they are our brand partners and they will give out a prize for that particular month. So you might get gotcha. a hundred dollar gift card to Primus. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's very yeah. cool. That's awesome. So yeah. how did you guys come up with all these ideas and, and the, the back end coding and all that? I mean, you were in education. Do you have any experience coding or does your husband or no nothing it's amazing what you can learn when you when yeah you, <laughs> when you have to the trick the trick really is to hire the, the right people mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and we have a really phenomenal cto who was the first person we hired um early early on and you know he runs the tech team and we have a full you know we have a app team and we have a website team bet, yeah. um so we have a full team now and um, Kevin has always had a background in marketing and sales. So he kind of handles mm. that side of things. And I work more with the, the product and making sure the vision of what we want the product to be comes alive. Cool. So were you entrepreneurial at all when you were younger or just this kind of completely developed out of a need and next thing you know, you find yourself yeah. running this huge website. It's funny. I, not at all. I would not. I used to joke and call myself an entrepreneur and I'm also, <laughs> yeah, I'm not one of those people who, because, you know, there's a huge entrepreneurial network here in Portland and yeah. I'm definitely mm -hmm. active in it now. But I, I'm not one of those people who I'm already thinking of my next thing, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. you see that a lot. I, this was my one thing, mm -hmm. was the one thing that I really saw a need for and I felt really passionate about. So passionate about that I was willing to give up my job and really dive into something I knew nothing yeah. about. Yeah. Um, and my Kevin, my husband, has been a part of startups before, so... He's been an entrepreneur since he was 18. Oh, okay. So he definitely brings that to the table. Gotcha. Right, right, right. <laughs> He's got that business spirit. That's good. Yeah. And how do you engage consumers? Like, how do people find you? They just stumble on you? Or what kind of outbound outreach do you do? How do they find you? Yeah, well, we, we do, um, you know, we do all the typical channels, Facebook ads, Google mm -hmm. ads. But right. really, it's our... our um, our community of rangers and people are super users who mm -hmm. help us get the word out. Um, and it's this gamification that we've done mm -hmm. where people come because they want to participate. They hear about it from a friend. They want to be a part of solving this problem and maybe winning something. Um, the brand partners we work with help mm -hmm. us get the word out. Um, you know, I think the gamification though, has been a really big part of helping yeah, Hope that's get the word out. Yeah, that's pretty huge, and that's a significant strategy. How did you guys figure that out? Did you did you take? I mean, did you have someone coach you on that, or just kind of stumble on that? No, you know, really early on, we um, the very first site we ever built when it was just me, I worked with a developer to create this WordPress site, and we had this big map of the U.S. And I said, if you are the first person to email me the name of the campground, a photo of it, a video of it, and tell me about it, I will put it up as a blog post and turn that state green, and I'll give you a $10, $10 REI gift card. Wow. So from the so right out of the get-go. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why we felt this need. We had to yeah. bribe people. but <laughs> No, well, that's, it's been, yeah, it's interesting that you came, you came at it from a, a bribe type concept but i mean there's that's just one of the significant things that you do when you build things like this is gamify it that's how a lot of people mm -hmm. achieve success yeah that's awesome you know and it's been it's been really fun working with these brands in the outdoor industry yeah. as well because they're super excited to get in front of these really focused outdoor camping right. people right um and once you know like i said once they win a product from primus or gregory or whoever they become a dirt ranger and we also have them review the product the next time they're oh, out camping. Mm -hmm. um, and the brands like that really authenticity that they're getting, you know, they're not sitting in their garage trying out a Primus stove. They're out at a campground doing yeah, it. Yeah. This and is their target user. I mean, this, you know, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. And I imagine you get a lot of repeat customers and, you know, you've got this ranger, these rangers, that's, those are, you know, people that camp a lot more than I do. Yeah. <laughs> They do. Yeah, we call them, them. Uh, power rangers. Yeah. <laughs> do yeah. you have, is it, is any, do you have like the, 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 
the tip top of those? What are some of the annual camping, you know, nights on the ground that some of these people get? Do you guys track that at all? Oh, we have people who are full time campers. Wow, right. that's how they they yeah. live. Yeah, that's so cool. we um we actually have some of our dirt rangers have even started writing for us. So we have mm. the dirt digital magazine on our site. You I was can, checking uh, that out. Click on it. Yeah. yeah, very cool. And a lot, you know, we have a lot of writers we work with, but some of those writers are actually our dirt users who are out on the road. Um, Sherry and Hutch are a couple who live full time in the in the road, and they love. They do kind of a series, mm. letting people know their tips on on what it's like. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So, what do you see the future like? Where's you're going to continue growing just because of the volume of people camping? But do you have any special things you're going to add to the site, or what's that look like? Yeah, we just actually did. we we've just added bookings to our oh, site. Oh, I was going to ask. So that. you know, it's it's still new, but yeah. our our dream has always been to kind of be the one stop shop yeah so the place you can come to read about camping to read reviews of camping to add reviews of camping and now to book camping um and that's just something we've we've launched this summer it's still pretty new um obviously there's restrictions with government sites that Mm -hmm. you know we we don't have access to that yet but boy you um, think the way they operate that they'd turf that off to you in a second (laughs) you'd be so much better at that than they are well hopefully someday we can you know yeah there's some partnership opportunities there but what we can do in the meantime is work with um both private campgrounds Mm -hmm. that are running commercial rv campgrounds or other sorts of private campgrounds or private landowners so people who Mm, might you know rent out a yurt or a cabin um who you know, really want to get in, in front of this engaged community and don't have a lot of other ways to do it. Yeah, you sure do have a focused community. I mean, that is the target audience for all these things, you know, for brands yeah, and for campgrounds yeah. and everybody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's great. It's pretty It's pretty fun. Yeah. What are a couple of accomplishments you're most proud of? Um, I think, you know, I... When I think of our rangers, I could almost like get teary eyed thinking mm-hmm. about them. They are the most amazing people who, and we, we have a special closed Facebook group for them. Mm-hmm. And when we're launching something new on the website or the app, I will put it to them first so they can, you know, I can get their opinion and they'll right. tell me if there's a bug. And, you know, we're talking hundreds of people yeah. and they, they are like an extension of our team and, to be a part of building that community is probably one of the things I'm most proud of in my life. Really. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Do they stop yeah, by and visit when they're in the area? They do. <laughs> they yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. We've had, I think four or five come through our office here in Portland. Wow. Um, we had one go to OR with us oh, a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah. You could have an annual ranger event like the PCT days. Totally. I would love to do that. That'd be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that'd be we're, fun. we're hoping to get that on the docket one of these days. Yeah. Very cool. And so you spent a lot of time abroad. What brought you back to the U S? Um, you know, well, I mean, technically it was for, um, uh, my husband, Kevin's job, which mm. was a different startup at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also, I think living abroad, especially, you know, we spent some time in London particularly mm-hmm. and yeah, I think that experience really, made me miss the outdoors quite a bit. I mm. remember being on the, the tube one time and just being smashed up against people thinking, oh, oh my gosh, I miss camping. Yeah. And I, I really, I loved living. I love living abroad. I'm sure I will again. But the thing I missed, especially living in a big city like that, was being able to easily and quickly get out into, you know, the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And enjoy yeah. the stars. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of places to do that in the U.S. It's great. There are, yeah. yeah. So in addition to camping, what other outdoor activities do you participate in? Um, you know, I'm a huge hiker. I mm. love to hike. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like snowshoeing. I am definitely not an extreme sport person of any of any kind. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. My husband, Kevin, will not go skiing with me anymore after one time. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm a fairly cautious person at heart so uh-huh. i like i you know i prefer the greens and that sort of thing yeah, um, yeah. but I'm, I, I, I'm a big hiker really that's my favorite thing to do and then camping of course that's great yeah that's a lot of places to hike there's plenty of days you could spend hiking in this country and uh, oh. in oregon where you're at man it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah 
and I miss fishing. I haven't fished oh, since yeah. I was a kid, and that was a big part of growing up, going out in the pontoon boat or the the boat, and just spending the day catching sunfish. Yeah. You know, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, plenty of that around there too. Yeah. 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 I have to get back into that. Um, yeah. Do you have any suggestions or advice for folks either wanting to get into the outdoor biz or maybe start something like you did? Start their own thing? I, you know, I am, I would say people ask me often, like, what was the hardest part of doing the dirt, especially as someone who's not necessarily your typical tech startup entrepreneur. Right, right. Um, I think my advice is just to do something just to, you know, and that was the hardest part to go from nothing Mm -hmm. to like actually taking some action to start doing something, Mm -hmm. um, was really hard. But if you believe that you can make a difference and you have an idea that's good and it's a a problem that needs to be solved, you know, just follow that. And, and, you know, people, entrepreneurs, people in the outdoor industry, we come in all shapes and sizes and Mm -hmm. different sorts and there's no, one size fits all. So, you know, I don't look like any other tech startup founder in Portland for (laughs) sure. Um, and then that's good. So Mm -hmm. just go with your gut and give it a try. Well, and the way you started, I mean, from that first step of sending someone an email, you know, asking them to send pictures, I'll send you an REI gift card to what you've built today. That's, that's proof right there that, you know, just start and then just do it. You know, yeah. next thing, one thing leads to another. Next thing you know, if you, if you cross all your T's and dot all your I's and stick with it, you'll have something. Yeah. 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 That's good advice. And do you have any daily routines to keep your sanity? Meditate, walk the dog, um, you can hike I a lot? Do, yeah. I hike a lot. I do yoga. Um, I try to walk to and from work every day. Mm-hmm. Um, so I try to try to stay active because, you know, it's, it's physically kind of demanding to be at a chair all day and not yeah. moving your body. So yeah, trying to just getting out there, getting to the ocean as often as I can. I find that to be really rejuvenating for mm-hmm. me. Cool. So, and are yeah. you guys downtown? Um, offices? pretty much we're yeah. on the, the east side of downtown. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I def- definitely will have to stop in next time I'm up there. Would love that. Yeah. I'd love to see it. Um, yeah. How about some favorite books? Do you have any favorite books or do you give books as gifts or favorite podcasts? Oh, uh, yeah, I am. I'm a big fan of Paul Theroux. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. I have heard he's of him. A, yeah, he's a travel writer. Yeah. And my first love was always travel. So he's written some great books like Riding the Iron Rooster and Traveling Through, you know, the China in that case. But mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a big fan of him. I like Bill Bryson. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I, some of my favorite books have been, um, I remember read, I can't remember the name of the author, but he wrote a book about walking around the, the world. Oh, wow. He literally took four years and he walked around the world. Hmm. Um, and I've always been really inspired by walking. There's another book. I can't remember who wrote this one either, who walked around the UK. Um, so just anything to do with like walking in the outdoors and mm-hmm. traveling are things I'm really passionate about. Have you guys ever done the Camino? I haven't. My yeah. best friend has done it a few times. Yeah, I, I have a buddy who's done it. Have you? No, I have a buddy who's done it. A guy I used to really uh, guide with. He and his wife have done it a few times too, and they just rant and rave about it. Yeah. Uh, I not- did Um, I did, I did. do a truck in Nepal that went very bad. Uh-oh. I did the <laughs> I, yeah, same thing. Up. You did? Were <laughs> well, you, where I did were a, you? Well, I did a trek. It wasn't a trek. It was a two-day walk to a river, and then we ran the river. But when we got to the put-in, it had just started pouring, raining, raining. So the water came, the river came up really, really high and got super dangerous. And it was just, you know, every boat but mine was ripped, and all the most of the boats oh. flipped, and a bunch of people got sick from, you know, oh. poor hygiene. It was just hideous. Yeah, <laughs> that hideous. sounds terrible. It was. It was. It was oh. kind of scary, you know. But, but we yeah. made it out. It's a great story to tell. But yeah, oh, interesting. Yeah. So you were on a trek and had something similar, huh? Yeah, I was, it was just me and Kevin. So we weren't part of a group or anything. We, and it oh. was more, it was just a couple day mm-hmm. trek up in the um, Annapurna circuit. Oh, cool. And I ended up falling and breaking my arm. Oh, no. And so having to hike, I think it took like 12 hours to get down the mountain and then two hour ride to the next town. Wow. And then a midnight surgery on my arm. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> That's epic. Yeah, but it was it was a great story. <laughs> yeah. And it was same. beautiful while it while I 
was enjoying it. Yeah, we, we had a great story too. And at the end, we had a couple of people that wanted to walk out and we were like, um, you can't walk out. There's nowhere to go. You have to get back in the boat. <laughs> And oh, they were just because they were afraid. Yeah, they were. They didn't, yeah, the, they oh. didn't go back in the boat. The water was just crazy. I mean, the water wow. came up really, really high. It was all muddy and brown, and just and it poured rain. I mean, it was like monsoon. You know how it rains over there? Just monsoon rain. Yeah, it was wow. nuts. Yeah, and then we that ended up scary. Totally scary. Yeah, and we ended up at a uh, Tiger Tops Lodge, and it stopped raining. It got hot again, and we were there for a couple of days to relax and ride elephants and look for tigers and. They had a bar there that night that we just destroyed because we were wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> just but, celebrating being alive. Exactly. Being alive. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But it was uh, it was a it was a good trip, good story. Like you say, yeah, that's the thing about yeah. those; they make good stories. Yeah, uh, they really do. What's your favorite piece of outdoor gear under a hundred dollars? Oh, that is easy. Yeah. I am. I am a Lucy light fanatic. Oh yeah. You're you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. Those are I, fabulous. I have them spread all over my campsite mm -hmm. and I give them as gifts all the time. Um, I was lucky at OR this year. I met the the founder and their CEO for the first time ever. It was really, mm, yeah. John, you know, John. Yeah. He was on the podcast yeah. a few episodes oh, ago. Yeah. Okay. And I'll I'm trying to, to get Sangra on too. Uh, hopefully this will come yeah. on in the next few months. Yeah. They're great people, aren't they? And, and you know, it's such an amazing product and then you yeah. put the mission of it all on top of it. Yeah. Um, it's an easy thing to feel passion for, which yeah. is hard to say about a lot of products. So yeah. It, yeah. it's pretty great. That's amazing what he can do with his inventory. I mean, if there's an earthquake, he can move inventory and have lights on the ground almost overnight. It's phenomenal. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. They do a lot of cool yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to say to our listeners or ask of our listeners? Um, no, I mean, just encourage people if they're interested in finding out more about the dirt, check us out, download our app. Um, you know, we really do think we're solving a problem for people out there. Mm -hmm. So we'll link to all that in the show notes. Yeah. Yeah. And we just, you know, we, our, our goal is really to make it easier for people to get out there camping. So it's not like, Oh, I don't know where to go. Forget it. I'm just going to stay home and watch Netflix all weekend, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So trying to make it easier for people really. And, um, yeah, so I, I hope yeah. that in our, our small way, we're doing that. Yeah, cool. We'll link to all that stuff in the show notes. And if people want to follow up with you, is LinkedIn the best way to reach out or how can they find you? Um, I'm kind of terrible at LinkedIn, but okay. I'm, I'm, I'm also on, <laughs> I'm on Instagram, okay. um, Twitter. Um, yeah, at LinkedIn. Cool. I, I, we'll put I your LinkedIn too. handle. We'll put your Twitter handle. We'll put your Instagram up yeah. there. And cool. That people sounds find great. It. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's been great chatting with you. Yeah, you too. Yeah, I look forward it was to seeing really you. Great. Look forward to yeah, seeing you. Yeah, it was great in, to meet um, you in person at Outdoor Retail. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Great to chat a little bit more. Yeah, we'll have to do that again next time. Yeah. Yes. And I'll catch up with you when I get to Portland next. That You are always welcome here. All right, cool. Thanks. And if you come to Bishop, right. give a holler. I will. <laughs> All right, have a good rest of your night. <laughs> All right, you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. If you want more of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to go to the OutdoorBizPodcast.com where you find all the episodes, show notes, and much, much more. Until next time, be sure to make time to get outside.